Hi there, welcome to a video tutorial here on combining transformations. So in this video, what I'm going to do is show you how to combine all of the transformations that we've been talking about in the video series I've been posting. And you're gonna come up with a graph that contains every transformation we've looked at. So just a little bit of instructions here. These are good steps to follow when you're combining transformations to make big super graph full of transformations. It's always a good idea to start with your knowledge of basic functions. If you don't know the basic functions, I've posted a YouTube tutorial on what those are and how to graph them. Start maybe by taking a peek at that, jump back into this video if you haven't done so. Remember, it's always important to factor out the coefficient in front of x. This is something that I've been talking about in all of my video tutorials. If you don't factor out that coefficient, you're gonna end up skewing your translation and you're gonna see an example of that in this video. So your order matters. This is something I've mentioned when we talked about stretches and reflections. Always start with those first and then apply translations. Okay, your translations are shifting left and right, stretches and compressions. Remember, you're, you're going to dilate, you're going to stretch your, your function around. Always start with those ones first, then jump in your translations. Okay, you can always use a table of values to fill in points at the end. Just as a caution, do not rely on a table of values. Your teacher is going to want to see you have a good understanding of these transformations. So just use this at the end just to fill in any points to, to paint a better picture of your graph. Okay, so I'm gonna do one example here. This is a, an absolute value function. There's a whole pile of transformations involved here. So I'm gonna apply these one at a time to this base graph. So you can see I've already plotted my base graph here. Uh, this is just the absolute value of x. The first thing I wanna do, based on my steps, we're gonna factor out a coefficient in front of x. Okay, so if you take a look here, you would probably think, well, you know, because this is positive, I remember there was a rule that said, if I'm adding a number inside, I move to the left by one. Well. You'd actually be wrong, and it's because of this negative here. Okay, that negative is trying to deceive you. You've got to factor that out. That's a coefficient in front of x. So you're going to factor that out of both terms. So if we take a negative out of both of those terms, you'd see that you'd end up with this new expression. And this new expression actually tells you that you're moving to the right by 1 because of our negative. Okay, so you've got to be very careful with your, with your translations. Okay, if you did not do that, you would end up with a completely different graph. One of the most common mistakes when combining transformations. Okay, so let's start by identifying some of our, our transformations here. I always like to start with at the beginning of the function, reading it from left to right. The first thing that we see is that there's a 3 multiplied in front. That tells us that we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, right? Our a value is a whole number, which tells us that we're stretching by that factor. So what I would do is I would take every point on my graph, I take the y value and multiply by three. I've already graphed that here just for the sake of time. I've taken this y value of one multiplied by three to get three. This one was a y value of two multiplied by three to get six and the same thing on the, on the left side of the graph. So I performed my vertical stretch. Continuing to read from left to right, I've got a negative inside my function. If you recall, a negative inside tells you to reflect over the y axis. Now the beauty of absolute value functions is once you reflect them over the y-axis, nothing changes. Okay, you can see that, I, that I've just done that here. Next thing that I see is that there is a shift to the right by one unit. Remember we factored out that negative. So now we know that we're moving to the right by one. So I could just take this function and I can move it by one to the right, just like this. And you can see that all of those points move with it. Okay, so I would apply it to each new point, shifting it to the right by one. Lastly, I'm moving down by three units. So again, I might as well just take my origin and just count one, two, three. And you can see those points come with it and I've got my new finally transformed graph. Okay, so that right there, that function involves all of the transformations we've looked at. Uh, it's always a good idea to just kind of stamp your, your transform function with a label and you can see the, the comparison from my original to my transform function. Okay, so that's an example of applying all the transformations, happen to be applying them to the absolute value function. What I'm gonna do is I'll post a quick series of videos and each video will just sort of explain how to apply those transformations to a different type of function. So you can see I've got the square root, the parabola, the cubic, and the hyperbola. I've already done the, the absolute value, so that should give you a pretty good idea of how to apply these transformations to all of our, our different base functions. And by the time you've watched all of those, you should have a pretty good idea of how to apply all of our transformations to all the basic functions that you should see. As always, thanks for watching.